week 27, Amphibians, day 2, Tuesday. Hello everybody! This week we are going to learn about amphibians. Make sure to see one video every day and at the end do all the activities. Have fun! The Salamander's Room Written by Annie Mazur Look at the cover of this book. Can you tell if this book is going to be a real story or a fiction story? It is going to be a fiction story. And we can tell because we can see the pictures are not real pictures. So let's go ahead and read our amazing story about the salamander's room. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dry leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come, come live with me, Brian said. He took the salamander home. Where will he sleep? His mother asked. I will make him a salamander's bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green and bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. I will bring crickets to sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. And when he wakes up, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. He will be his friends in the forest. I will bring salamander friends to play with him. They will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room. And every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders. And I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. The insects will multiply and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects, and the bullfrogs will eat them too. Where will the birds and the bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. Birds need to fly. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out in the sky, but they will come back to my room when it's time for dinner because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. But the trees, how will they grow? The rain will come through the open roof and the sun too. And vines will creep up the walls of my room. The ferns will grow under my bed. There will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on. And you? Where will you sleep? I will sleep on a bed under the stars, with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing, and next to me, on the boulders, with its head resting on a soft moss, the salamanders will sleep. The end. Okay, now that we have read our story, 
we're going to review some very important questions about our amphibians, which in this case is the salamander. That they tell us in the story. Okay, remember in order for animals to survive, they need four very important things. These four very important things are food, shelter, water, and space. Let's see if throughout our story, we can find those very important things a salamander need in order to survive. We read on the story where it says, I will bring crickets to sing him to sleep. And we also see the drawers full of leaves where the salamander sleeps. He is providing the shelter, the drawer full of leaves. Then later on, we can read, I will bring the boulders that he can creep over. That's what he's using for the salamander as a space to be in. Later in the story, we can read that Brian said, I'll bring insects to live in my room and I'll make little pools of water. That's why he's using as food, which is the insects, and little pools of water as the water that he's going to need. Okay. Let's review our chart. Brian is using insects as the food. He is using a drawer filled with leaves for the shelter. He's using little pools of water as the water. And he's using the boulders for the space for the salamander. Now that we have that we see all the four items, do you think that Brian has all the things necessary in order for the salamander to survive? Yes, he does. He has everything the salamander needs. Okay, now that we have read our story and we have reviewed the very important things in the story, it's time for you to go do your work. Draw a salamander and all the four important things the salamander needs in order to survive. Now, using a paper, draw a salamander. Hello, guys. We're here again, all together. Learning time. Let's practice some blend sounds. We're gonna make new words today, just adding a sound to your word. Let's check this. We have the word mile, mile. If we put s at the beginning, we get a new word that is smile, smile, always a smile. Then we have Top, top. If we add s at the beginning, let's see what new word we're gonna have. Stop, stop. Let's keep going. Reap. If we add g at the beginning, we have a new word that is grip, grip. Then we also have again, rip, new word, adding t at the beginning. Trip, trip. Let's go read the words all together. Smile, stop, grip, trip. Very good, there you go. See you later, practice at home. Bye-bye. Hi guys, today we're going to review quotation marks. Remember, quotation marks tell you someone's exact words. So if you remember last week, we read the book about what an adventure with Zack the Rat and Teen Man, they were having an adventure together. In this story, Zack having a problem with his fan. So he asked this, will you fix this fan, Tin Man? Said Zack. If those are Zack's words, we need to use quotation marks. At the beginning and at the end of the words. Now we're going to see what Tin Man answered to him. If we check our box with some words, we have I, not, 
it help can. Let's try to make a sentence with the answer of the teen man. Teen man said, are teen man words, so we need to open the quotation marks. I can help and quotation marks to close and period because it's the end of the sentence. So remember guys, every time you read a book, if you see quotation marks, that means are the exactly words of the character. Working time. Guys, today we're gonna do an investigation. You know guys, everything around us have weight. Even us, some are heavy and some are light. And then we're gonna compare the weight of this object. First, I have a book. Let me feel the weight. Hmm. We need to compare. So let me grab the total. This total is um, an stuffed animal. And if I can compare the weight, I can feel the total is lighter than the book. So lighter. Now I have this block. This block is made out of wood. Hmm. The block is heaviest than the book. Let me put it in the other container. The third object that I have is a color pencil. Let me see. Oh, the color pencil is lighter than the book. And then I have to put it in the lighter container. My last object will be a container full of toy. Let's see. Oh my God, the container is super heavy. So I'm gonna put it in the heavier container. So now you can grab a book in your house, you can find objects around you and you can compare your materials. Let's practice lighter and heavier. We hope you had fun today, guys. Please complete your math lessons on happynumbers.com. Bye-bye.